This video is for entertainment and educational purposes only. Hey guys, Big Paul here. Today, we are going to talk about carb cycling for size, for putting on muscle, for hypertrophy, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, I've had a lot of requests for this one, and this is a fascinating one. Uh, people ask me if I do carb cycling in the off-season or if it's only for contest prep. I run carb cycling year-round. Now, and it is very effective for all phases of a bodybuilding, um, you know, bodybuilding off-season, bodybuilding um, contest prep cruises. It really, it really is sort of a self-regulating system once you understand how it works. We are going to dig into that today. All right, so some of the key benefits for carb cycling for size. You guys know about it for um, fat loss. We talked about it last week. If you haven't, go back and watch that video. I, I have it up. It's I believe it's called Carb Cycling for Fat Loss. Take a look at it. Um, so improved insulin sensitivity is one of the key things. And you ask me, Paul, how are you eating Captain Crunch on your high days and improving your insulin sensitivity? So I, the typical bodybuilding off-season diet is to run high calories every day of the week. They, the old school way of doing it was just to eat the same thing seven days in a row. And so you're constantly pounding your body with, with high carbs, high fats, high protein, whatever the diet was. And you don't give yourself a break to, to regulate. With, with the carb cycling diet in the off-season, typically we'll do two in some cases, maybe three days, uh, high days per week. So really our high calorie days where we're really jamming down the food are limited to two or three days per week. Um, and that helps maintain insulin sensitivity. On the low days, we actually pull back to where we're at, at maintenance or probably slightly below maintenance. So it helps give your body a chance to resensitize and maintain insulin sensitivity. I've actually throughout these uh, off season on a carb cycling diet, if I'm strict with my diet, I've actually seen my insulin sensitivity improve. It's pre pretty wild. When you're hammering the same foods every day, what ends up happening is that you, you know, like if you're eating the same thing on your off days as you are on your, your tra hard training days, you, you don't have the same caloric demands and uh, there's only so much you need for growth. And after that, you're just adding fat. So carb cycling has a system of self-regulation where you have high, medium, and low days. On the days that you don't have as much cal caloric demand, you're actually self-regulating because you're doing medium days and low days on your off days. So you actually pull back to where you, you're not um, in such a surplus that you would be storing fat. Um, another situation is the um, improved fullness. I know a lot of people like to run things like carnivore and keto, but the problem with carnivore and keto is when you're not eating carbs, you're not full. You don't maintain muscle fullness. I, I don't care what people say. Guys are going to argue with me. People get pissed off when I say anything critical of keto or or carnivore. I mean, they have their place, but uh, for bodybuilding, I don't think they're very productive um, unless you need to reset insulin sensitivity or you're just severely fat and you need to lose, lose some body fat reset insulin sensitivity, then I, I you can maybe sell it on. But ultimately, muscles run on glucose, and having glucose in the diet keeps glycogen full, keeps the muscles performing well, and is optimal for physique athletes. Um, another thing is the increased metabolism. Um, when you have these spikes in calories on the high days, it tends to pull your metabolism up. I've noticed that guys over time, if I just do slight small increases in calories over a period of time, I know, I know some of my clients will get upset. Well, you know, why, why are you only bumping me 20 grams of carbs today? Uh, that doesn't make any sense. It's not going to make, you know, make shit all a difference. Yeah. It's like adding the two and a half pound plate to the bar when you're lifting weights. It doesn't seem like much that day, but if you keep adding two and a half pound plates over a five year period of time, the next thing you know, 
you're benching 500 pounds or you're eating 5,000 calories as your maintenance calories. So it's slow incremental increases in calories and your metabolism regulates to those increases in, in calories. So you end up having um, an improved metabolism. Plus the high days tend to spike metabolism. I'll notice on my high days that I'm sweating like crazy at night uh, to the point where I have to put a fan right next to right next to my bed because my metabolism is so revved up. Um, and then, you know, for the psychological aspect, there's built-in cheat meals. I mean, people, people, people love their cheat meals. I, I'm, I'm one of them. It keeps you sane. You know, I, I, I know you there are coaches out there who say there's no need for cheat meals and yeah, you're right there for, in most instances there to have, you know, to go out and eat a hamburger and French fries, you, you don't have to eat a hamburger and French fries to survive or succeed in bodybuilding, but to keep yourself mentally sane, yes. And you can still have fantastic results, maintain your social life. Uh, we're not robots. You know, if you lived, you know, if you lived in a, an isolated environment where you had no children, no, no wife, no girlfriend, no partner, whatever, and you never went out and did anything, sure, you could go 365 days a year without going out to eat and having a cheat meal. But that's not the way most of us live. And... To be honest with you, the results on the stage, you don't know. When you see somebody on stage, you don't know if that guy had a cheat meal or not. You just know what they look like. So isn't that what really matters? All right, to understand really how carb cycling works in the off-season, we need to understand how the various macronutrients are partitioned by the body and how they're used and utilized in terms of body composition, energy, uh, repair. And I know I've gone into this before, but I'm going to dig into it again because I think it's important. Uh, this is one I probably should beat you over the head with. Um, so all three macronutrients, fat, protein, carbohydrates, all three of them can actually be used by the body for energy. All right. And if we're in a phase where we are trying to build size, we want to spare protein to be used for cellular repair. We want to spare carbohydrates. We want to have enough carbohydrates in our diet to to totally fill out our glycogen and to fuel our workouts and we need enough fat for cellular repair and metabolic function and yada 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 so we want to optimize those macronutrients for those three purposes so if you look at protein then you take a deeper dive into protein and what protein does in the body protein is used for tissue cellular repair um, it can also be used as an energy source through gluconeogenesis, which we don't want in the off season. We don't want our body burning protein as a fuel. Um, you, it can be used for muscle building, muscle protein synthesis. Uh, if we dig into deeper into the cellular repair, um, uh, you don't need as much protein as you think either. Um, and then, you know, there's also, this is another thing with, with proteins, there are certain macronutrients that there are essential portions of those macronutrients that your body cannot make on their, on its own. And you have to get from dietary sources. So, uh, essential amino acids are not something that your body can make on their own. So you have to get them from dietary sources. This is where diets such as vegan or vegetarian diets are deficient. Yes, you can supplement those things, but most vegans and vegetarians don't. It's just been my experience. They don't. That's why they end up looking like they're sick a lot of times. Um, you, you certainly can supplement them, but you have to be diligent with your diet. But I would say the average vegan or vegetarian pays zero attention to whether or not they're getting sufficient EAAs in their diet. Uh, fat. Fat is a, another macronutrient that does have essential, um, an essential function in the body. Um, fat is primarily used as energy, um, stored energy. Your body can, you know, we all know what body fat is. It's energy for a rainy day. It also insulates the body, protects the organs. Uh, fats can act as uh, messengers, uh, helps proteins work. Uh, it's, they start chemical reactions. Um, they boost immune function, reproduction, uh, maintains aspects of basic metabolism and helps uh, absorb fat soluble vitamins. They really do a lot in the body. But here's the thing: you don't need as many fats as you think you do. And defi <laughs> you know, a lot of a lot of American diets are deficient in protein. Not many American diets are deficient in fat. We fat is the probably the one macronutrient that we abuse more than any other. People think carbs. 
No, you look at the average American diet, most people over greatly overeat fat. It's not it's not carbs, that's the problem. I know everybody likes to make sugar out to be the devil and that you know carbs are why people are fat. No, I I'd, I'd say that in most cases that the average American and I see it with people that come to me for diets, they eat way too much fucking fat. Um so, you know, fat can also be used as a secondary energy source. You know, ketosis, we all know about that. Uh, we want to burn fat while cutting. And while we're putting on size, we want enough for important metabolic functions and no more. That's it. Um, fat is suboptimal fuel source for weight training. Um, you know, so when you're on those keto diets, you, everybody has tried to lift on, on a keto diet knows how, how you can't get a fucking pump. Um, you know, how energy sucks. And I know guys will say, oh, once you're in ketosis, it's great and all that stuff. Um, I'm telling you, it's not the same as having high carbohydrates. There, there are, even the bodybuilders that say they run keto diets for cuts aren't really keto diets. They still have re reload days. So they're doing like one day a week where they refeed and load up on, on carbs again and they load up before shows. So they're, it's not really keto 365. Um, some fats, just like proteins, cannot be made by the body. They are essential. And I hear people all the time use this as the excuse for overeating fats. Well, Paul, I need it for hormone production. Well, Paul, you have to have a certain amount of fats in your diet. Um, I, I, why are you cutting my fats so low? You, <laughs> when you look at the studies, take a guess at how many EFAs that you actually need in your diet that the average American or studies just showing the average person needs in their diet. Seven grams. That's it. That's it. Seven grams of VFAs per day. That is it. So, um, you know, let, let's say in our instance, you know, we're bodybuilders. We're pushing this to the limit. Let's, let's, let's double that. Let's say 14 grams. The average American takes a breath and needs 14 grams of fat. Now, a lot, most people aren't needing a lot of EFAs. It's mostly shitty saturated fat which you really don't need at all your body can make that on its own and you got plenty of saturated fat stored around that belly of that big ass belly of yours and that big ass ass of yours <laughs> all the saturated fat you need is there you don't need to get it from dietary sources um so you know really all you need is some essential fatty acids and that's why you know when i construct diets for people i, I put some added fats in that are efas and I keep the saturated fats as low as I possibly can keep them. Uh, carbs. Carbs is the one macro. There are no essential carbs. So technically, you don't need carbs to live. You can live without carbs, as the keto guys have proven. Um, car carbs are strictly used as a fuel source for the body. Um, so why do we need to eat carbs if there's no e essential carbs? Car carbs are the body's preferred fuel source. Um, it's like putting kerosene in a in a car and you know your car might start up and run well, kerosene for a little bit but it's not running very well um you know but uh it's probably a bad analogy but you know you want to run the most optimal fuel source which is carbohydrates uh the body stars stores carbohydrates uh typically in three ways as muscle glycogen as um liver glycogen and and fat and ideally we want to keep the muscle glycogen topped off the liver glycogen type topped off and minimize the fat storage uh gl glucose you know carbs glycogen keep that you know if you want that what people call the 3d effect that bodybuilders have the big full round effect you know, when I have a high carb day and I pump some insulin, I'll go in and people will be like, oh my God, you look huge, dude. What did you do? And I'm like, I eat carbs. <laughs> that's what I did. That's why I look full around. You know, so that's, that's how you get that look. You cannot achieve that look on a keto or a carnivore or a low carb diet. You just can't. You got to eat a ton of carbs if you want that big, round, bubbly look. Here's another argument I hear against carb cycling diets all the time. Most of carb cycling diets are moderate to low protein. Um, and, you know, dudes are like, don't you need to run two, two and a half grams of protein per pound of body weight to, to gain muscle? There, there, was this, there was this thing going around in the early 2000s where dudes were eating five, six, seven hundred grams of protein per day. Um, <laughs> at the end of the day, 
if you think about it, what, what happens to the excess protein that you eat, the protein that's not actually being used for muscle protein synthesis? Most likely your body's just converting, <laughs> converting the, the gluconeogenesis into carbohydrates. So you're just, you're just eating really expensive carbs and putting your body through some stress to uh, convert them into carbs. So why not cut out the middleman, improve your digestion, and just eat enough, you know, carbs to, you know, eat enough protein to get the job done and then fill the, in the gaps with carbs. So all that extra protein you eat, you're eating is just wasted. It, it, it's not going to kill you, uh, but you're, you're spending money you don't need to spend and you're really, you're just eating really expensive carbs. Uh, studies have shown, I mean, there's been multiple studies that have shown over and over and over again. I mean, of course, this is like on your average schlub. Uh, they, they, the one I recall seeing, they took these guys into the gym that just started eating weight, and they found that somewhere around 0. 0.7 to 0. 0.75 grams per pound of body weight was what uh, uh, a novice weight trainer needs to um, support proper recovery and muscle protein synthesis. Well, most of us, you know, like I'm 270 pounds. I'm not your average gym goer, so. If I want to play it safe, I probably want to keep it somewhere in the one to one and a quarter. Um, I want to run it probably over what I need, slightly over what I need. Um, I'd rather have a little too much than not enough. Um, so I run my diet somewhere between one gram and one and a quarter gram of protein per pound of body weight. That should more than cover our needs of, for protein for muscle protein synthesis. Um, so, you know, on the higher carb days, we need less because carbs are, are, are protein sparing. Um, so that's kind of how we do it. Uh, and I'll give you an example. So if you want to, you know, my, my trainer, Justin Harris, always, all the time breaks down the math on it, but if you, so I'm going to kind of pull one of his cards here. So when you, when you look at it, so the, let's look at the protein synthesis, um, Example, and I know your body your body uses protein for more things than just muscle protein synthesis, but let's assume that you gain 20 pounds of muscle in a year. 20 pounds is 9,071 grams. 9,071 9, grams divided by 365 days is 24.85 grams of protein per day. So in theory, you only need 25 grams of protein to support 20 pounds of muscle gain per year. Now we know in practicality that doesn't work that way. You know, some of it gets used for other others, you know, cellular repair, other things. Some of it does get converted into carbohydrates. Some of it doesn't actually get absorbed, just passes through your intestine, you know. It, you know, so and we know what the studies say, you know, the, the 0.7 to 0.75 grams per pound. But anyway, that just shows you how little protein it actually takes to, to generate that mus muscle protein, new muscle protein synthesis. We also have turnover of old tissue, things like that. So, but you know, it's, it's kind of an extreme ridiculous example, but it just shows you how little is actually required for new muscle protein synthesis. So the whole two grams eating 600 grams of protein, um, if that truly made a difference, you would be gaining, you know, hundred pounds of muscle in a year, but so, so we, we know now that it doesn't really make shit all of difference. All right. So constructing a carb cycling diet for muscle gain, we, the carbs, we want to keep the carbs high on workout days. We've established that carbs are the most optimal fuel source for keeping glycogen full and for fueling, um, bodybuilding style workouts since the muscles use glucose to, uh, to run on during workouts primarily. Um, so car where carbs are kept on high workouts, um, and it keeps insulin high. We want to lower the carbs on non-workout days since we are not placing any sort of demand that requires glucose. If you're sitting on your ass all day long, you're, you're not really burning any glucose. So you don't really need to eat much. Um, uh, fats are kept moderately low. We've established that we don't need a ton of fat, um, and any, extra saturated fat that we might need for energy or whatever your body has plenty of it sitting around that fat ass of yours so it can get it from there we just really need to cover our efas if we really want it to be extreme with it we probably just need to cover our efas and we're good i, I put a little extra in there but um you know because we're in the off season we want to be in a surplus to support growth um protein and we want enough protein to fuel muscle protein synthesis to run cellular repair 
um, and essential body functions and have a little bit extra to cover us just in case. Um, you know, we want to get our protein from whole food protein sources mostly. Um, and we want to eat meals every two to three hours. So we make sure that we have ample coverage throughout the day for, um, protein synthesis. Um, so car, car, uh, so the typical diet construction, the low days are going to be lower carb days, slightly higher in fats, moderate protein, um, you know, probably closer to that 1.2 grams of protein. Um, your medium days should be, uh, right around, um, right around maintenance calories, maybe slightly higher than maintenance calories, maybe a couple, couple, couple calories higher, uh, a couple hundred calories higher, depending on how big you are. The, uh, low days are going to be slightly in a deficit or right at, um, maintenance. Usually they're just a tad bit in a deficit. Um, you know, and then our high days, uh, when we're in a size phase, a big athlete might run three high days a week. Most people are going to run two high days a week. Um, you're 270, 280 pound, fairly lean guy like me. You might need three high days per week. Um, and so on the high days, when we're running crazy amounts of carbs, like for me, I'll go up, you know, over a thousand grams of carbs sometimes. Um, I want to keep the fats as close to zero as possible. Uh, because when we have that high amount of carbohydrates and we are using exogenous insulin on top of it, any um, fats that are beyond our needs, our metabolic needs, are just going to get stored as body fat. So we want to keep those as minimum as possible. Um, the protein needs doesn't need to be as high on those days because uh, we're eating tons of carbs and carbs are protein sparing. So um, if we're eating... If we're eating uh, a, a ton of carbs, you know, I'll usually lower it down to closer to that 0.7, maybe even 0.1. If I want to be safe, uh, grams of carbs per, per pound of body weight. And then the last meal of that day is uh, a cheat meal. And that will be after the insulin's cleared our system. I have videos up on my insulin protocol, but typically I'll run a rapid acting insulin with meals one, three, and five. And then five is my pre-workout meal. And then um, my cheat meal will be my last meal of the day after my workout. And at that point, I should be pretty depleted and most of the insulin should be cleared in my system. And I can have a higher fat meal with uh, some safety at that point. All right, guys, that kind of gives you a basic outline of how uh, carb cycling for muscle gain works. Um, and, you know, people ask me what calories, you know, how many you should you eat? And it, it, I'll, I'll tell you from working with people, it, it wildly varies from one person to another. It's pretty pretty crazy how different different people's metabolisms are. Some of it may be just how people track food. Some of it may be their activity level. But it, it, you know, caloric requirements from one person to another is is wildly variable, and I really have to adjust it based on individual response. So I wish I could give you a set number. But a lot of it is just nuance. You have to just kind of play with it and see how people respond and make judge make judgments uh, based on those responses and adjustments from there. And it really there really isn't a simple, straightforward way to parse it other than that. I, I do have kind of a formula I use for the initial setup, but a lot of times we depart from that very quickly and it's going to be customized adjustments from there. Um, anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hope it was helpful. I uh, really appreciate you watching. Take care. For coaching or consultations, head over to www.anabolicbodybuilding.com to book your spot today. I can help you with optimizing hormones, fat loss, muscle gain, physique, athletic performance, nutrition, and health. For more information, shoot me an email at bigp3rd at gmail.com.